Hello everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Tanya Evans, I'm the CEO of WorkPro and today's presenter for our first um, in the series of webinar uh, training for this year. And today's session starts it off with getting started with the WorkPro basics. Um, there is quite a lot of people on the webinar today, so thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please pop them in the chat and we can address them uh, prior to the conclusion of the webinar today. I'm going to take about 20 minutes or so um, covering off the basics of WorkPro. So for those of you who are new to WorkPro, you're going to find this the most useful. Although having said that, um, I know that there are some people on the call also that um, are looking for a refresher. So once again, thank you for joining me and we will get moving. So today's uh, webinar, we're going to cover off on uh, the importance and how to create packages to help streamline and uh, create a standard within your organisation for WorkPro, um, importing an existing WorkPro candidate, uh, sending and tracking those requests. So once you've created your packages, then you're going to be sending them and then of course tracking them. Um, a little view of the WorkPro dashboard and how to get the most out of the WorkPro dashboard. Um, the importance of searching and filtering to find certain candidates. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about um, of, uh, groups and creating groups. And then finally, uh, WorkPro Insights. Uh, just before I get started, um, just a little bit of a sneak peek of WorkPro's roadmap uh, leading up to the end of about September this year. So we've got lots going on, but um, the, the latest uh, additions uh, one is uh, uh, SMS, which um, we're currently piloting and is due for release at the end of June. Uh, Vivo Pulse, so for those on the call that use WorkPro for your work rights and citizenship checks, um, the Vivo Pulse, so once you've sent a, uh, a work rights request and you've got your result, rather than having to set a reminder to recheck someone, our system will just continuously poll the Vivo database and then send you back any alerts of a change of status of those individuals' work rights. Um, and pre-employment medicals and drug and alcohol testing. So we've partnered up with a company called JobFit and we're currently working on a seamless integration that will allow you to send pre-employment medicals, drug and alcohol testing through the WorkPro program. So let's get on with our webinar. We switch screens. All right, so we are currently in the WorkPro dashboard. And as mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to use the packages in WorkPro. So selecting actions, packages. Now you can create an unlimited number of packages in WorkPro. So you might have um, workers who are office workers. You might have uh, those who are stores workers. You might have those that are working alone. Um, so you want to create um, a group of tasks and you want to package those tasks up so that when you or uh, your colleagues are sending requests from the WorkPro platform, rather than having to click on each task that you'd like to send, basically drop down a package and then you can choose your uh, to send a package really quickly. So um, I'm sure that you can see how that uh, creates a standard and consistency across your organisation to manage that um, important compliance. Um, and also uh, when you're sending a package, um, you can also add uh, tasks to it. So I'm going to show you that in a moment. Creating a, part, uh, a package is as simple as name, choosing the tasks that you would like to add to that package and simply saving the package. It's as easy as that. They are self-managed, so at any time if you want to change a package, uh, delete a package, you simply do that from here or you can edit anything. You can take things out, you can add more or you can delete a package from here. So that's completely under your control. And as I said, an unlimited number of packages. So once you've uh, set up your packages, you want to start sending requests from the platform. So selecting new request, you're either sending a request to an existing candidate, sending a single request to a new candidate or sending a bulk request. So looking at sending a request to a single candidate, select continue, entering their name, their email address, their mobile number. Like I said, SMS is coming by the end of June. Up here, and you're going to drop down the package that you've set up. Or if you don't want to send them a package, so you've just got one task that they may need to complete for your organisation, 
you might just be clicking on whatever the task is that you need to send them and you send the request. So that's how you're sending a request to one candidate. You want to send a, um, a group of candidates a request, you might be wanting to send a bulk request. So sending a bulk request, select continue, and there's two options for you. You're either entering details manually, so you might have three or four candidates that you need to send Work Pro to, in which case you're dropping this down, entering their name, email, mobile, and dropping that package in or you're using a CSV file, so you're creating your um, Excel spreadsheet outside of the WorkPro environment. Three columns, one with their name, one with their email, and one with their mobile number. You're saving that CSV file, selecting the package that you would like to send to this group of people, uploading your CSV file, and sending the requests. So hopefully that's clear. And of course, we move on to the important part of tracking the request. So once your request has been sent, the candidate will receive a text message and email. Once they've clicked on that, um, that text message or that email invitation, it will tell them the tasks that need to be completed. They're logging into WorkPro, they're signing up and they're completing those tasks, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, the WorkPro platform, once you've sent the request, you can see the requests that have been sent here and track requests. So you can see the candidate's name that you sent the request to. You can see the token that's contained in the request invitation. You can even view what's been sent to this individual and you can see the tasks that have been sent. And then you can see any history. So in terms of history, uh, WorkPro sends three reminders to a candidate three days apart. Thank you for that question. I'll answer that in a moment. Thanks. Um, so the WorkPro platform sends those reminders three days apart. Um, if the candidate there um, remain, if the candidate task or request remains outstanding, you can see how many times this person has been sent a reminder. In this case, only once. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have to need to contact that candidate if those tasks remain outstanding. We find that in most cases, the candidate may, may need that little extra prompt, but we also find that uh, once the prompt has been um, sent once, uh, that the candidate is more likely to have completed it. They just might need a little, a little prodding along. I'm just gonna quickly select the Insights dashboard, which I'm gonna go back to a bit later. But this is another way that you can track the requests in WorkPro, but seeing it in a visual in a visual way. This does take a little bit to load simply because I'm in a GoToWebinar. But looking at these ones here, you can see request status. So you can see requests that have been sent and you can see the token that remains um, unused. So if I was to click on that, these basically these candidates that you've sent a request to that are yet to log into the platform and complete their requirements. In this case, you can see two, and I can just drop that down, and I can see that Katie has four um, tasks that remain outstanding from that request that I've sent her. So I'm gonna come back to that Insights dashboard a little bit later. So moving on, you've created your packages. You've started to send your requests. You've sent a request um, to a single candidate, and you've sent a, uh, a request to a, um, uh, a number of candidates. The next thing I'm going to talk about is adding a candidate to your dashboard. So to put that into perspective, once a candidate has signed up um, or uh, created an account in WorkPro and completed any task in WorkPro, they have a digital profile that they carry with them. And they have the opportunity to share their digital profile with you um, under their control. Uh, and they do that by providing uh, what's known as a CIN. So every person that registers for WorkPro has a digital profile and they have a unique, uh, a unique identifier called a candidate identification number or a SIN. So um, about 1800 companies use WorkPro as their workforce compliance partner and we're clocking up um, just, just shy of 3.2 million candidates who have completed WorkPro. So it's a significant number of candidates 
which means those people are wandering around with a WorkPro profile who have already completed certain things. So they may have uploaded licenses, they may have completed a citizenship check, they may have completed a police check so their application has been pre-populated, they may have completed some learning modules. So rather than having to repeat the process, what you might ask your candidate um, when you need them to do WorkPro is, have you done WorkPro previously? Or have you registered for WorkPro already? If they do, they have been sent what's the CIN number. So I can then simply enter that CIN that they have to provide you. You can't just come in and search for a person in WorkPro. You enter their CIN that they've provided to you and their surname, and you do a search, and up pops this person's profile, and I can see what's being completed in the induction modules, licenses, and tickets. And after seeing this information, I can then make a decision about whether I need to send this person a new request or whether I need to, um, like citizenship and work site information as an example. I might need to do a new check on this person or I might need to validate or produce the compliance certificate for any modules that this person has already completed. Don't worry if the person says, oh, I don't know, I can't remember whether I've got a work pro profile or not. Um, really, this, this function here is useful if that person has told you they've done work pro. If you don't know or the candidate's not sure, simply send them a new request from the dashboard of whatever tasks it is that you require them to do. When they go to sign up for WorkPro again, um, A, the system won't let them because it will match a mobile number, an email address or a name. Um, and if they have completed WorkPro and they log in again, the only tasks that will be shown to that candidate is those that remain outstanding. So your request may contain six tasks, but that candidate has already um, signed up to WorkPro and has completed three of those tasks for another organisation. Those tasks um, are already done, so it won't be shown to them as part of the request. And once they've completed their requirements or completed their tasks, all that information will be um, shared with you um, in your dashboard. So um, that's pretty useful. Um, in terms of uh, uh, moving on to the WorkPro dashboard, so you've sent your request, the candidate's logged in, they've completed their requirements, and now we're on to having a look at the candidate dashboard. So you can see here there's a range of, um, of, um, of data sitting in this dashboard. You can see here the candidate's name. Um, you can see here any background checks that have been completed or are in fact not completed. So you'll see statuses sitting in this dashboard. You can see any learning modules that have been completed, any licenses and tickets and documents that have been uploaded or that you're still waiting on. So this is, I guess, just a basic um, view of your dashboard. Um, that provides you with statuses. I'm going to focus over here on the filtering function. So using this filtering function, there's a few things that you can do here. One is you can search for a candidate. So you're looking for a specific candidate. You might want to be looking for um, someone who has completed um, certain um, modules, or you may um, want to be bulk processing, for example, um, uh, producing compliance certificates in bulk rather than one by one. Uh, you might be wanting to uh, complete their work rights check. Uh, you might be wanting to send a whole bunch of people to Vivo at once rather than doing a work rights check um, individually. So let's just have a look at, um, let's look at background checks first. So using the filtering function, you can clock in here, click in here. So I actually want to um, find anyone who is just need to clear these. A non-Australian citizen whose information or whose check is ready to be sent to Vivo. If I apply that, you can see here that all of these people have completed their uh, work rights information or their citizenship information and they're ready to be submitted to Vivo. So using the filtering function, jumping up to actions and choosing bulk Vivo check. You've got the list, the list of candidates here. You're selecting none or you're selecting certain candidates that you'd like to check the work rights. Bring to the terms and conditions. You might be wanting to enable automatic reminders to be reminded, you know, within 
30 days of this person's visa coming due for, remo uh, for renewal and you submit the Vivo check. So, you know, in real sense, you could have quite a lot of candidates um, sitting here ready to submit to Vivo. So rather than having to do them individually, um, within, you know, a few seconds, once you've clicked, uh, selected submit, Vivo check will be completed and this status will change to finalised um, with a, um, a record of or the certificate of their work rights and all the conditions that go with that, right? So that's a real um, opportunity to streamline your processes and make that really simple for yourselves. Coming back over to the filtering function, let me just clear that filter. You might then want to be looking at um, actually, I've delivered um, uh, WorkPro Learning to a lot of candidates over the last week. I want to have a look at and I want to be able to produce the compliance certificate in bulk rather than one by one. So let's have a look at filtering. Show me those candidates who have completed WorkPro that I need to produce the compliance certificate for. And if I select that, you can see here this little hazard image. Hazard image um, is those people that have completed training module you're yet to produce that compliance certificate for as I just filtered. So that's a really good little indicator, nice little icon for you to use. And coming over here to actions, book induction verification. Again, here's your list. These are the can these are the modules that these people have completed. Selecting all, selecting some, and verifying as candidates, all right? So rather than having to do it one by one. Um, the filtering function can also be used for um, you know, multi um, filters. So um, you might be looking for a candidate who has the rights to work in Australia and who has completed the, let's just say office, whoops, the office worker safety module. So let's just go with these last two versions of that module and you might be looking at someone who's also got the rights to work in Australia. So non-Australian citizens whose cheque has been finalised and they have unlimited work rights or an Australian citizen whose proof has been accepted. So I can just then go on, it's not results here, but you could apply those filters and up would pop that information in those, in those candidates. Okay, so there's some really quick actions that you can take. Um, and I would encourage you to use those filtering functions. Let me just clear that filter. And just finally, on the filtering function, um, classifying groups of workers together. So rather than having to, you know, see a, a big list and, and you, know, you know, someone like, um, you know, uh, some of our organisations or some of the clients have, you know, tens of thousands of candidates uh, who, are, uh, who are using us for their compliance purposes. So um, they may, um, and, and they do use them like this, they group workers uh, together. So there's office workers, they could, you could be your stores workers. So um, using the actions tab, let's define some candidate groups. And you can see here, I've got a uh, forklift offer and I've got um, Amazon. Using that filtering function as I showed you before, so you could say, actually, I want to um, I want to store or group people together who have the rights to work in Australia and have completed the stores worker that are um, that are current. That so that induction module remains current. So once you've created that um, that your group, in this case Amazon, choosing the little icon here, you can allocate those people to a group. So let's just use these two for example. And then using the filtering function, selecting basic options and go, I just want to have a look at all my um, people who are currently working at Amazon, um, who have a current uh, stores worker module and have the rights to work in Australia. So under those filtering conditions, using groups, applying that, and there's your Amazon workers. All right, so they're nicely grouped into one um, visual. Um, Outside of that, um, I just want to then just really quickly talk about the Insights tab. So for those of you um, who haven't yet used the Insights tab, uh, this was a function that was released uh, to WorkPro customers about eight weeks ago or so. Oops, sorry, I got one open. <laughs> and the Insights um, 
in the insights function is a visual overview of everything that is going on with your compliance in WorkPro. So at a very top level, logically, you can see here, here's the compliance items um, that are expiring in the next 60 to 90 days, 30 to 60 days within, and now you're in the red zone. You've got a candidate who um, has got some compliance um, that has expired. So if I was to click on that, you'll see here all of the um, service lines in WorkPro and you can see here one of your candidates license has expired. So in this case Joel Adams, his driver's license, this is the date that it expired. You can click on this link here or this, this um, icon here and you can go straight to Joel's profile. You can have a look um, at anything else Jacob has done or, or requests that you've sent him that remain outstanding etc. So this provides you with much more of a, a, a visual cue of either um, certain candidates or um, certain compliance. Now why that is useful is that rather than having to run the filters or rather than having to run those reports this captures everything about your compliance where you can then very quickly um, set up reminders or send requests to a candidate or group of candidates um, that need to um, complete or refresh out or upload new licenses or complete um, a new uh, background check as an example. And uh, a couple of levels down you can see that there's a number of requests that have been sent and of those requests how many tasks make up those requests. Coming over to request statuses, you can see um, in, in this period of time, so for the last week, this is how many requests that I've sent, tokens used and unused. Um, of those tokens, what's been completed, so four inductions have been completed, eight remain outstanding, and similarly with background checks. So if I was to click on inductions as an example, it gives you more granular information of these people who you've sent a request to but their task remains outstanding. So yes, WorkPro is um, sending those reminders, um, three reminders, three days apart, but this gives you a bit of a visual look and you might like to con you know, be contacting Katie and saying, listen, you know, we really want to place you, um, you know, place you for work, but we can't, these things remain outstanding. And by clicking on Katie's profile, you can also see anything else that's either coming up for renewal that you might want to have a conversation with her about or that other tasks that remain outstanding. And then jumping down to the final piece which is about your subscriptions. So these are all visual cues of your subscriptions. These are expiring within the next 30 days. This is your usage um, and this is your 85% usage. So you just might want to keep an eye on these. The WorkPro platform does send you reminders um, as your usage starts to run out at 50%, uh, 75%, 90% and expired. And similarly, if you have a time frame on any of your subscriptions, so they might have an annual subscription, yes, we're sending reminders, but ultimately this allows you to self-manage and provides an overview of what is going on in all of your subscriptions with WorkPro. So you can see here, this is an induction. Verification is an induction subscription. And if I was to click on it, here is all of the information that relates to your induction subscription with WorkPro. So this could be any subscription. I've just pulled this one up as an example. So there's your current contract dates, that's the billing frequency, the price you pay for WorkPro, um, the volume, um, 72 used, 428 inductions remain, your total contract value, and the instalment value. So this provides you all the details around your subscriptions and your usage. And you can click this and have a look over what period of time and what you're doing with your induction subscription. All right, so coming back to home. So um, I'd encourage you, um, we're doing a lot of work in this insights area to make it better and better and better. Um, of course, should you have any feedback once you've started using this insights area and you have any feedback for us, um, you know, please, you know, get in contact with us because, um, you know, only through your feedback um, and use of this can we make it um, can we make it better for you guys. 
So um, outside that, um, that concludes today's kind of basic overview of WorkPro. Um, there is a couple of questions here. So um, hopefully, all right, a couple of questions. Um, so um, one of you has asked, um, or let us know that you sent an email with the link to the company page to complete packages. Will this mean they will not get an SMS to complete the modules? Um, yes, they will continue. So when the SMS is int introduced, um, if, you, if you email a link to a candidate outside of the WorkPro platform, so in other words, you're not sending requests from the WorkPro platform, um, you're sending just a link via email to any of your candidates, um, you will, they will not get an SMS. So just to be clear, the SMS function in WorkPro is only if you use WorkPro to send your requests. Yes, you can um, you know, um, deliver or you can provide um, the token to a candidate or you can send them to workpro.com.au um, to complete WorkPro and give them your package token, but that means they won't receive a text message. They're not being sent for the WorkPro platform. Um, does the insights work based on permissions? Yes, anyone with permission um, to use WorkPro, um, and I will, I, I can see who's asked that question, and I will get this clarified. But late last week, we provided everyone um, who has either a site ownership of WorkPro or in the, is it an account administrator access to the Insights dashboard, but I'll, I'll make myself a note and I will come back to you um, about that once I've spoken with um, tech. And finally, another one, use WorkPro within Bullhorn to send your requests. Yep, when we'll be able to see a request has been sent. Um, I'm actually unsure about that. I know that there is some, um, so basically this person has asked, they've said they use Bullhorn um, to send requests or work pro requests and manage those. Um, and they want to know when they'll be able to see that a request has been sent from the work pro window inside Bullhorn rather than having to check with work pro. Um, so to answer that question, um, there is someone in our team who has been appointed as an integration specialist and is right now strengthening and building out new web hooks. Um, and also um, making some adjustments to our API. So that may or may not be um, in this release, but I will um, check that and I'll come back to you. I can see who's asked that question. Thank you very much. Um, that, that are all the, they, these are all the questions that we've received. Um, so if there's nothing further, um, we're right on time. It's 1.28. Um, naturally, if you have any other questions, um, please don't hesitate to get in contact um, with either your account manager or on our 1300 number. You might also find articles. Um, so on the front page of our website, um, you'll see the little help widget and there's all sorts of articles that can help you, um, that, that can help answer any questions that you might have. Um, so thanks so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate your time today and uh, hope, hopefully you've got something out of this session and uh, I will see you later in the week for another Training Academy. Thanks so much. Bye.